place. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of questions coming from the online audience about, mm -hmm. uh, about taking time off between undergrad mm -hmm. and, and medical school. Mm -hmm. uh, Emily is asking, uh, I have to take a two-year break between undergrad and applying to medical school due to military service. Will my classes and GPA still be acceptable to admissions committees, or does she need to do something else to, to update her resume in that time? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, in, in a sense, Emily, your, your, uh, your applications is going to stand out in a, in a positive way because of your military service. Um, you know, typically when people take a year or two off, we, we have no problems with that, if, even if it's three years. It's what they're doing with that time. She is going to be doing something that I think is pretty impactful uh, and will give her some incredibly rich experiences that she can talk about in the application and in an interview. Um, your, your academics don't uh, change for us. So you're, your, your prerequisites don't expire. Um, we do tell people that if it's been four years or more since their last biology course, mm. they should probably consider taking, no, we actually strongly recommend that they take an advanced um, biological science course, uh, molecular biology, mammalian biology, something that shows they still understand the biological sciences. Um, but as I said, the prereqs themselves do not expire. Good. Good, good to know. The MCATs, however, will. That's but exactly what I was going to ask. <laughs> but it, it, it also depends on the medical school and uh, when they plan to apply. Some schools will say the, the score is still valid for two years, for three years. Um, we will say it's four years from enrollment or three years from the application. So their scores are still valid for us. We, there's no need to, to change it. Now, of course, if, they want, if they've done something academic in the time that they've been off, and they think they may have a stronger score, then certainly retake the MCAT. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it hasn't, it's only been three years and they don't want to, we, we're not going to push. And I think that relates to your earlier point about submitting the strongest application possible. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. The only thing I would caution, though, Owen, that it, you know, there are people who are taking time off because they have holes um, in their clinical experiences. Mm -hmm. you know, in, in other words, they don't have much to show. And that's what they should be doing then. But if someone has holes in their academics, uh, that's a student who's had maybe a few C's too many, and not early on, but throughout their, their tenure as an undergraduate, uh, I would hope that that student is doing something to stay academically connected mm -hmm. and show some improvement. So I think this actually relates to, to the next question I was going to yeah. ask from Jordan, wondering what do application committees look for in a gap year? If I'm hearing you right, it sounds like it depends on what the weaknesses are in the application. It's right. It's, it, it, it literally comes down to case by case. Yeah. Um, there's no set thing that we expect to see. More than half of our students uh, entering every year have taken at least one year off for a variety of mm -hmm. reasons. Some are doing the research programs in Bethesda. Some are doing um, an academic program abroad, mm -hmm. you know, one of the, the, the scholarship programs, Fulbright and so forth. We've had Rhodes, obviously. Uh, some are in the uh, Peace Corps, and that's fine. If someone is working for a year because they need to um, gather their finances, strengthen their finances, I totally respect that. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's why I say it really is case by case. Excellent.